good morning. Today, I thought long and hard about what to make a video about. And the truth of the matter is, there's really nothing I got going on today that you guys haven't seen a hundred times before. So I thought today would be a good day to take you around the ranch. We're gonna run over to the hay field and I wanna get everybody updated on where we're at with all the various things that I have going on out here and give you an idea of what is coming up because while today is kind of slow i've got some really busy days coming all right let's go get updated that's what's going on today on farmer tyler ranch Back in the good old days, I used to take the side-by-side -side out here to check water and do all the stuff that I need to do here. That was a lot faster and a lot easier, but since getting Cali home, I have tried to use this time to walk. And it's not for my own exercise, although it's probably not the worst thing for me either. But this is a great place for her to run around and get some exercise. She's not fully up to date on her parvo shots yet. <clears throat> And I know that we're taking a little bit of a chance by letting her run around out here, but it's like, shoot, she's a puppy, you know, she needs to get out, she needs exercise, you can't keep her cooped up in the house. And I think we're pretty safe here because there's no other dogs that come on this property. The only other thing would maybe be a coyote, but I haven't seen a coyote out here in years. And the last one that I saw, well, he didn't make it too far. This is also a good place for me to start working on some basic commands, which the main one that I want her to learn first is a, a recall or, you know, coming to me when I call her. This is a great place for that because it's wide open. She can see me. What I've noticed, which is pretty typical for puppies, when you get far away from them, they want to naturally stay with you. So um, what I've been doing is just sort of getting away from her and then calling her. When I get her attention, she'll just kind of naturally come back to me and then I can give her a lot of praise when she gets back. And in the past, this has worked pretty well for teaching them to come when called. We've had Callie home for about a week now and I think she is really starting to settle in and feel a little bit more comfortable with us. I know the first couple of days that we had her, she would whine and cry a lot. I mean, just no matter what she was doing, it was like she was always scared or upset, which makes perfect sense, you know, pulling her out of the environment that she was used to and, you know, driving 600 miles and expecting her to act normal, I guess, was probably not realistic. in order and Callie has burned off at least some of her energy. Let's run up to the barn and talk a little bit about my hay situation this year because it's it's still kind of up in the air. So let's run up there and I'll tell you what's going on. Get down, you want to stay. Need to stay in here, that's fine. Callie has certainly reminded me that a puppy's energy level is a matter of extremes. They're either bouncing off the walls, chewing on anything they can get their mouth on, or they're wanting to go to sleep. And right now I think she wants to go to sleep, so I'm gonna let her. Well guys, as you can see, we're back in the small square business and this is really not what I wanted this year, but um, through circumstances out of my control, that's just how it's gonna have to be. Now, for those of you that don't know, my hay field that I had uh, completely bailed up in round bales caught fire and burned down. I lost about half of the bales. I got some of them moved back to the barn before that happened, fortunately, but I lost so much that I ended up having to buy hay to make that up because without that hay that was out in the field, there's no way that I would have been able to feed these cows through the winter. So the hay sitting here is three grain forage mix. This is the same kind of hay that I plant. 
but the remainder of what I'm getting is going to be sedan grass. I've never fed sedan grass before, and I'm not really sure about the nutritive value of it. So probably what I'll end up doing is feeding the sedan with the three-way, and after I do a little bit of research to get an idea of what the protein content is of sedan, I might offer them a protein tub as well just to make sure that they've got everything they need because when I'm feeding the hay, they are pregnant and they are getting into that final trimester where nutrition needs go up. So I wanna make sure that I have some good stuff to give them. I think I will put some pipes on this one because I've got them sitting right here and I would just hate for that thing to fall over. The old pipes here in the barn are from my grandpa. This is going way back to when he cut and baled his own hay out here before my time. And he used an engine driven New Holland baler. It was a two wire. And I don't know the model number of that baler, but I do know that it was old. And at any rate, I think that baler probably made some spongy bales and I seriously doubt grandpa ever had a moisture meter. So he was probably just going off a of feel, and I am sure that this barn had some spongy bales going at a time or two. That's why the pipes are here, because I do remember as a young child, this barn being full of hay, and the whole front face of that stack would have pipes all along it. I've been tempted a time or two to use these pipes in the corral, and now I'm really glad that I didn't, because it ended up that I actually needed them. Before when I was talking about the busy days ahead, this barn and this hay is one of the things that I was talking about because now I'm kind of I'm kind of goofed up because I've got about half of my hay in round bales and half of my hay in square bales. So I don't want to just take these stacks of squares and put them right in front of the rounds because that just doesn't seem like it's going to work. Um, I think what would be better is to take the square stacks and put them along the manger here because that's where they're gonna be fed out. I will probably just go five and five next to each other and that way they kind of support each other a little bit better. Um, but if I do that, then that means I need to do something with all these round bales. So what am I gonna do with them? Well, my thought is to put them in the side of the barn here Gonna have to clean this area out obviously i was planning to put hay in here regardless so I, I guess that part's not going to change but i figure i can get about 60 bales in here so that's going to leave me with about 40 left over that i'm either going to have to um, stick in the barn here after the square bales are stacked or just put them outside and feed them first i'm not really sure how that's going to look just yet but at any rate, I have got a lot of shuffling of hay to do that I'm not really looking forward to, especially as hot as it's been. But what are you going to do? And now I'm thinking about it, I don't think I have shared with you guys what my feeding plan is going to be with the two different types of hay. Like I mentioned before, I want to put all the square bales along this manger and I will obviously feed them here. Um, the cows that eat at this manger are going to be the adult cows in the fall and early winter. And then at that point, about half of them go over to the winter pasture. Whoever stays here will eat the remainder of the square bales. The plan is, and we'll see how this all works out when it actually happens. But the plan is, is in the early fall when I'm feeding out in the field, I wanna to try to use the round bales and just unroll them out there for cows and calves. And that way we'll get a little bit of a reseeding effect from that hay. We'll get a lot of manure and everything kind of trampled in. And what I'm really hoping to see is that we'll get some good spring growth there, maybe to the point that we could cut and bale it. Not really sure how that is gonna work, but it's something that I would like to try. So the round bales will be used out in the field, but we've got too many round bales. We would not use them all feeding them that way. So the other thing that I'm going to do with them is use them to feed the yearling calves down at the small manger. This year, we're going to have about 35 yearlings eating at this manger from sometime in November when we wean up until early January when we sell our, our main calf crop. 
but then there will be those replacements that we keep that will continue to eat here until spring or maybe even early summer depending on when I feel like we can get away with letting them back out with the main cow herd. The only reason why I would want to wait to do that is that I don't want them to find their mom again and start nursing, um, which has happened before, so uh, it, it's a real concern. But the plan here, because this manger is so just kind of broke down and and in disrepair, which which is not really a coincidence because I haven't been wanting to put really any money into this because I've been knowing that I was going to rebuild it. But what I will need to do is to just basically tear this whole thing down. I'm going to leave the uh, roof here because I want to keep that. I I wish that I could like lift it up about a foot because I always hit my head on this, but I, I don't see that happening. Anyway, so we're going to put what I'm hoping is a metal sort of fence line bunk feeder all through here. But what is gonna be kind of unique about it is I'm gonna take my Lakeland round bale feeder ring and I'm gonna use the three sections in a line so that I can put round bales here. I could put three of them at a time. And the way I got it figured is all those calves should be able to have access to hay at the same time and if they don't, three round bales is like way more than these calves could eat in a day. So I think after we get on a rotation, as long as I keep the feeders full, the more dominant calves can eat first. And when they get full, then the other ones can sort of filter in and get what they want. I've got these metal fence line feeders here that I got from a friend several years ago. And I'm thinking that with these and with the Lakeland bale ring, I can sort of cut and splice and sort of put all this stuff together give everybody a place where they can stick their head through and hopefully it works. So I have got a lot of work that I need to do over here at the ranch to get ready for winter. I've been wanting to get started on this stuff. It's just been so dang hot out here that it's really easy to put it off. And I feel like I've got till about the end of November to get all this stuff done, which sounds like quite the time frame, but keep in mind that in that time frame, I also need to work the hay field, get the hay planted, and everything that goes along with that, not to mention processing cows, weaning calves. Um, I wanted to build some sort of a bale unroller for the field, and since a big part of my plan hinges on being able to feed a round bale out in the field, I probably need to do that too. So, yeah, plate's pretty full. But it seems like I'm always able to make it work every year, so hopefully this year's no different. And speaking of the hay field, let's run over there. I want to take a look at it. I actually haven't been out there since it burned. I've driven by it a couple times, but I just <clears throat> haven't really wanted to go out there and look at that mess. But I got to face the music uh, sooner or later. I kind of want to see what I'm in for. I'm thinking I'm gonna need to bring the chisel over there to uh, to work those bales in if they didn't burn all the way. So I kind of got got to get an idea of, of what I'm up against. You ready to go? You look like you're still tired. Are you still tired? Hmm? Did I did I wreck your nap? I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't very well do an update video without showing you guys Buddy because every time I do one of these and I don't mention him, I get several comments of people asking how he's doing. Usually it's kind of no news is good news, right? Um, and he's doing fine. But I think something that I've really noticed with him is since putting the Redmond mineral blocks out here, his coat has gotten this deep red color like a normal Hereford should be. And if I can find a picture of him when he was younger, I'll put it in here now. But he used to be really light, like almost a tan color, which I always thought was kind of weird. Um, but it just kind of goes to show you that when they're on that powdered milk, you know, it's just not as good as what mom can give. 
and getting them on some good minerals really seemed to to wake up this coat what good does it do me not much but it it kind of just speaks to the quality of that mineral and speaking of redmond they are doing a giveaway right now that you guys can enter completely for free if you run over to our instagram page there will be all the instructions on how to enter there but there's some pretty cool stuff that you could get redmond products and my favorite prize maybe an ftr sweatshirt <laughs> As you can see there's really not much left out here most of these bales look like they burn completely through which actually is a good thing if they're gonna burn it's better for it to be like that because now when I come back through here with the disc or with the chisel they'll incorporate into the ground really well there's a few bales um, up at the burn line that didn't burn through all the way so they're actually gonna be kind of a mess to get rid of, but um, that's why we have, well, that's not why we have the chisel, but it's a perfect use of the chisel to help to break those up and scatter them out a little bit and incorporate them into the ground. As we look at this overhead shot, it's almost unbelievable the way that the burn line, or the burn area, I should say, focused right where the bales were still in the field. Anywhere that didn't burn, I already had the bales picked up. The only place where the fire was is where there were bales. And I mean, I'm sure that's because as one bale would start burning, it would throw a spark to the next one and so on. For the way this fire ripped through here, it really couldn't have been worse. The fire department was only able to save three bales, which I still need to come over here and get. Um, and, and I'm thankful for that. I just... You know, I just really wish this wouldn't have happened. Crop residue, when I'm working this ground up, is not going to be an issue this year. So there's that. But what I am kind of worried about is having all this ash on the ground. I'm going to probably need to have a spare air filter for that tractor. And me, myself, I'm probably going to have to wear a respirator while I work this ground. In addition to losing the hay, we lost several trees down here on the levee, which isn't a huge deal. Except this one oak tree here in the corner, I always like to stop and uh, take a break under. It's a nice spot where you know you're going to have shade during this time of year. It looks like it didn't kill it all the way. It just sort of it hurt it, but I'm, I'm hopeful that it will come back. Now, how's this for irony? My oak tree that I like so much definitely took a hit. This tree right here ain't coming back. He's done. The levee burned. This ditch here burned. These walnut trees burned. What's the one thing that did not burn? This guy's burn pile. I'm certainly gonna have to get the chisel out here and chisel this probably twice. One time for sure, and then maybe I can sort of spot chisel where there's a lot of stubble. It's a little more groundwork than I was planning to do, but you know, it's just what it's gonna have to be. Now, the challenge, <laughs> it seems, is getting this insurance company to send me a check. We started at the ranch checking water again and hopefully after watching this video you guys kind of get an idea of all the stuff that's coming and I think the other thing that I forgot to mention is the manure spreader is still in pieces and I really need to get that done before we start getting some rain assuming that we do actually get some rain this year because I want to try to get manure spread out on this field and I want to try to reseed a little bit as well but that's got to happen when it's still fairly dry out here, I think. So, anyway. Lots of things to do, lots of things coming up. But as for today, I think me and Callie need to get back home and get something to drink. Because it's starting to get hot. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. And I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.